So, don't get me wrong. I love my ninth generation uh, SI. I've had it from up from uh, 75,000 miles to I think it's at 140 almost. Uh, I love it. Drives well. Sounds good. Um, as reliable as can be. I haven't had any real issues with it besides uh, blowing up the transmission, but that was all my fault. Um, one of the drain plugs came loose and out went all the fluid. But I've been daily driving this thing for about three years, and while I love it, there's a few things that have bothered me. Mainly being how cheap the plastic is and how loud the car is. Now, I have an exhaust on it. I know. I have an intake on it. It's loud. I get that. That's not what I'm talking about. When I'm driving, like, you hear the plastic creaking. You hear... Like, you can see that play in the plastic. Now, it sounds cheap. Like, the whole interior sounds cheap. Now, you're, you might be like, oh, it sounds like normal interior. Yeah, there's 75 pounds of sound deadening inside the plastic and the whole car to uh, dampen it. And it still feels cheap. It's like, I don't know, like all the plastic rattles around and I replaced all the clips that I broke when I took it off. But it's just so cheap and it's fragile. Super fragile. Like, you look at it funny and it breaks. Uh, point in case. Uh, this was a Texas car. I went to uh, pull this to uh, sound deaden it. And uh, put a crack in the plastic. Went to go remove the other side. There's a crack in the plastic right there. Um, there's another crack down here. Oh, right there. There we go. Crack city. Uh, then, uh, the, uh, deck piece back there. Um, also when I was pulling it out, it cracked. Maybe the plastics don't age well, or maybe because it was a Texas car and now it lives in Minnesota. I don't know. But that was not reassuring at all, where I was like, oh, crack. Well, thanks. Now, uh, I'm not paying hundreds some bucks to replace that panel, so it's just sitting there. That's one of the things I don't like. And it's like high-quality dyno mat that's inside here. It's rolled on property properly. I have the foam covering all the places where the clips go in, so it... I don't know why it makes a noise. Same with the dash piece. It's like... It's clipped in, and there's play. And it, every bump, this thing creaks over. And it's been driving me mad. <laughs> like, uh, I hate the little creaks and the little cracks, and add, add a little bass, and the, the deck starts vibrating. When it's sound deadened, it shouldn't be doing all this. So that's one of my gripes that I have about this car. I'm about to get it fixed uh, as soon as spring comes in another six months. I'm going to tear all this apart and I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably put foam in there to uh, further sound deaden it. And hopefully that fixes it. Because this thing is notoriously loud. Even when you're going on the highway with some wind noise. This sounds like a base model Corolla or something. Or like a, uh, just something super cheap, Chevy Avio. That's what this thing sounds like when you hear the wind noise and you hear the creaking and the cracking. And that's what I'm not a fan of in this car. Now, I heard the 13s, 14s, 15s uh, SI got all this fixed. The wind noise was fixed with bigger uh, windshield gasket. The, the panels were replaced with something higher quality. But if you're buying a 12, look out because it's, it's not good, especially as the car ages. So the next, th the next thing that bugs me is the suspension. Now I get it, I get it. It's a sp sports car, sporty car. Yes, I get it, totally, 100% with you. However, I just wish that there was some other option um, between feeling like your spine's about to snap on every single pothole you hit. Granted, I'm on stock suspension I have 16s with winter tires on, so it shouldn't feel all that bad. When I have 17s on, you're like shaking, my radar detector's bobbing up and down, the sunglasses fall off the holder, like it's bad. 
that's what I didn't like, or still don't like, because there's nothing you can do. You can replace the shocks with the same OE ones, and it doesn't get any better. You can put sports shocks in there, and it gets worse. I used to have a D2 coilovers on the softest setting. It was a little softer than this, but still, you I mean, you feel the bumps. Like, every time I hit a bump, I'm like, oh, is my rim still there? Because it does not handle bumps well at all. Um, the coilovers on, like, the medium setting where most people drive, maybe I'm just sens <laughs> sensitive. But, boy, this thing really hits the potholes bad. Like, you feel like the car's going to fall apart every time you hit a pothole. And the roads in Minnesota aren't that bad. I can't imagine driving in California or something with the horrible roads, but like, yo, I wish there was another option. Like, I know this isn't a Camry, this isn't a Lexus, but I wish it had better suspension. Something that when, because I don't race this thing, I don't take it to the track, I don't do jumps with it, I, don't, I drive the thing daily. Sure, I have some spirited driving, but I can deal with more body roll as long as the suspension's softer. But there's no options. Um... You just have to deal with it. Um, maybe put a cushion on your seat so it doesn't smack you in the spine so bad. Um, but yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, maybe it's because the car's getting older. Doubt it, but who knows. Uh, the uh, Acura ILX, which is built on the same platform as this, has a different model of shock. So I might uh, head over to the junkyard and see if one of them will bolt up. Maybe that'll be an option. Because it's the same exact car. Like... Same chassis, same motor, everything. It just looks different. And they got, like, Acura shocks. So I'm sure it's more more comfortable in an Acura. It's not going to ride like a like a Corolla down the road. No one would invest money into it. So what else I can't comprehend is why this car lacks the most basicest features. Like, when I bought the car, you can't even get a heated seat. Bro, you save one pound. I want a heated seat. So I didn't manually and take my seat apart and install my own seat heaters because that's what I wanted. Uh, the radio that came with the car sucked. It sucked so bad. I mean, it's not hard to replace, but come on, Honda. What were you thinking? Same with um, the the mirrors. It would have cost you 15 extra dollars to put heated mirrors in. Why not put heated mirrors in? I don't know, but I hate scraping them every time because it feels like the thing is going to fall off. <sighs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the car, but it seems like Honda wanted to save a few pennies. So then if I want heated seats, I have to do it myself. If I wanted this uh, mirror with the garage openers, that's uh, auto daytime. I had to install that myself. Aftermarket uh, head unit, installed that myself. I haven't gotten in the mirrors yet because, you know, there's nothing to replace them with. And then you have to run the harness through the whole cabin. Um, yeah. So, now I know someone's going to be like, oh, it's a sports car. You stick a turbo on it and you drive it perfectly down the street. Cool. If that's what it is for you, awesome. Great. I'm happy for you. But this is my daily driver. I'd like this thing a little more comfortable. Like, I came from an 8th Gen Civic, which wasn't as bad. Not not an SI, it was an EX, EXL. But I just wish this thing rode just a little bit nicer and wasn't made out of the cheapest uh, plastic you could get your hands on. That's what I'm not a, not a huge fan of. Um, but if I ever do sell this thing, I'm going to Acura TL or uh, Lexus uh, LS. Because, you know, it's cool to be all of a uh, car guy -y and have a... A nice six speed that you can shift through the gears with and uh, and then you hit your spine a few times and you're like eh, nope not for me <clears throat> maybe some I'm having a feeling like 95% of the people are gonna disagree with me but that's good we got different goals we got different outcomes um, I just want something comfy and something that I can uh, shift manually um, I don't want something sporty this is sporty enough and I want something a little a little tamer like a beamer except front-wheel drive and no reliability issues and cheap.
wanted to uh, just wanted to add uh, if you're a little big boned or a little uh, rounder around the edges, you're gonna have a bad time in these seats. These seats are not comfortable at all. Like if you're driving more than like half an hour, they're so uncomfortable. Like one stabs you behind like on the side and the other stabs you in the shoulder. That, like if you're skinny as a twig or like probably normal weight, um, is gonna be all good. If you're a little bigger, a little rounder around the edges, need to work on a weight loss strategy, you're gonna have a bad time in these seats. I've had this car for three years and I hate long drives. Like anything over three hours, and I'm like, yo, these seats gotta go. Mm -mm. I cannot stand these seats one bit.